Well, to your backpack with any of the G.E. and uh, Conway Milk for Kenya and uh, Conference Shop at Conway Milk. Like I said, bring me to the chiller, a very uh, couple of years, to Harvey Bull, uh, Kruger, uh, Tanshire, I'm sure, or Shane. You're, you're a top shelf in a, in a, in a huge shop. Uh, not be a ride, you know, could you uh, uh, cash in and uh, correct me how. So, welcome to the uh, Conway Mill here. And this is, uh, I have five speakers. And just before we kick the proceedings off, if you just take, the, if you have a phone, put it on silent or turn it off. And if anything, you need to go to the toilet, there's, there's doors in to your right, behind it here. And just a short distance down the door. So, this is uh, last year's uh, first special conference. Um, we we'll had we'll a closed we'll session this morning, and we met him that very well. So, when, we, when we're talking about a time for a socialist republic, this isn't a new theme for anybody, anybody in Ireland or our parts of the world. When we think of, when we're talking about a socialist republic, one of the people here, not the only person in Ireland, was, was James Conway. And we're, we're in here in Conway now. And we'll think of this, today, in 2023, it's a beautiful building, uh, well structured, well heated, well, well insulated and all this. But you can, you can just imagine when this mill here, one of many mills opened in Belfast, which was Euphoria, in the 1830s in Belfast. And at that particular time, Belfast, a lot of people were coming in from uh, other counties around uh, County Ando to, to live and to work here. And when we read about places like Conway Mill, we read about, we read about uh, places like Harn and Wolf, other major industries. These industries were owned by unionists. The management were unionists, and the working class people were, in all due respect, those people, they lived in slums. Slums which were very close to here. Obviously, times have changed. The housing is, is, is rightly so, is a lot better. And one of the people here who was very vocal in uh, uh, exposing the conditions in which workers live and work was James Conley. James Conley lived about, for, from a, uh, him and he and his family lived about a mile from here, in a house at the bottom of White Rock Road. So he would have walked up and down these, uh, around these streets, up and down this road, the Falls Road, many times. He would have walked over to the Shankill Road, and then I guess all, all this, excuse my language, this crap about crossing the community stuff. He was, it was all for, uh, socialists and Republicans who would just talk about the working class. And when we think of the conditions in which these people, Mostly women and girls, most of the work. There was, there was slaves, and the, the mortality rate in Belfast, not just in Belfast, but we're here in Belfast, that's what I'm talking about, the mortality rate is very high. People, there was rampant disease, tuberculosis, typhoid, and other disease, cholera, and such like, which there's antidotes in mostly in the Western, or, uh, Western world, whereas we live in our parts of the world, people are still down with these diseases. The people here in Belfast day of. So when we think of when, when Cammy wrote about it, and we're turning around and say he was trying to and he was exposing the conditions of his people work, called for a revolution. And this is 2023, and I would argue, and a lot of us would argue, that although poverty might be as blatant and as uh, obvious as it was in those days, there still is a lot of poverty, deprivation in, in our our, our communities close to where we live, whether it be the Falls Road or the Shangri Road. And it's up for us, up to us, to bring about change. And the only way that change is going to come about is not be sitting here talking about it. And when we talk about revolution, revolution doesn't necessarily have to be an armed revolution, but time is right, time is right for revolution today. When we think of what has happened here in Belfast, Dublin, Donegal, Derry, and other parts of the world. I'm just talking about other parts of the world. When I woke up this morning at half six, I was looking at a uh, restless, get up. First news I put on was uh, Al Jazeera. Now, Al Jazeera sometimes means a lot to be desired. But when we think of what, and this is just what they are, the Zionist scum, what they have been doing there for, since this past, for decades, torturing and butchering and massacring the Palestinian people and the so called allies of Palestinians and that was too bad. It's to continue to stand by and stand idly by. And when we think of it, what uh, Hamas has done, the people in Palestine said, enough is enough. 
We can argue about the different uh, political groups in Palestine, whether it be uh, Hamas, uh, uh, Palestinian Authority, they leave a lot to be desired, to be perfectly honest. But they will do it and they can say enough is enough because the people are getting tortured every day, getting tortured every day, and they put into the belly of the beast and fair play in that opinion. And I think when we, we look at, not we should not we concentrate on our own country, of course we all live here, but well, most of us, we still see one or two people from other parts of the world here, but we need to, to think of where we are going today and tomorrow, and not just sit and talk about there's, 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 there's things to be done here in Belfast, things to be done in uh, Dublin and Donegal and Tyrone and some of our speakers here will be speaking about them. So talking about speakers, the first speaker I have today is, is uh, Kieran, Kieran Perry, or Kieran Perry, as Bally Clean. He's an independent councillor for Cabra, Glass Mountain. He's a trade unionist. I'm a political and community activist, so a big building your boss for Kenya. Yeah.